Hi guys, it's Graham again and welcome back to my channel. Today I have part four of my September book haul to share with you. Um, I have no self-control um, and yeah, that's just, that's the gist of that story. Um, I was at a, a meeting for work the other day in, in Perth, my hometown, um, although I live in Dundee. Um, and afterwards I had some time to kill so I went to some charity shops and I'm not ashamed to say that I bought some books. I bought five books altogether. Um, the shops weren't that great, they didn't have that many things because obviously they're not taking in do donations at the moment I don't think. Um, and so yeah, uh, but without much further ado, let's get into the books. So the first one I have to show you is A Suspension of Mercy by Patricia Highsmith. I have only ever read one Patricia Highsmith uh, book before and it was a collection of sort of like short stories that, that had a kind of um, macabre sort of feminist twist to them and I think little stories of misogyny I think it was a, about a year or so ago I read it and I can't remember if I do remember I'll pop it down here somewhere um, it definitely had a sort of misogynistic type um, feel to it it was like against misogyny. Um, this one sounds really up my street and I can't wait to get to it. Um, who hasn't imagined killing his wife? Sidney Bartley has compulsively, repeatedly, plotting methods and forging alibis. He's a thriller writer, after all. He even knows how he would dispose of her body. When Alicia goes missing, Bartleby struggles to convince, to convince anybody of his innocence caught in a trap of his own making. It just sounds amazing. It's like, um, to me, that kind of feels like a bit of a, an Agatha Christie-esque kind of mystery. Like I say, I've never read a lot of Patricia Highsmith, so I might be wrong in saying that, but that's the vibe that I get. Um, and it also feels a bit like, um, oh, there was a play, um, and I can't remember it. It was, uh, a young man had written a book and or a play he'd, he'd written a play and uh if i remember the name of it i'll pop it down on the screen somewhere um but he he sent his play off to another famous playwright and um the playwright planned to kill his wife and then he killed the playwright or he killed the playwright and then he killed his wife and yeah he used the play um, as his, as his, well, he was going to use the play as his own. Um, it's a while since ago since I read that, um, and I've probably made zero sense, but I will pop it down on the screen below, um, what that play was. But that's the vibe I get from this. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, the next one is a Faber Classics edition, and this is just stunning. I just love this. And this is The Midnight Fox by Betsy Byers. And isn't that just beautiful? And inside, there was a piece of tissue, and I thought, oh, that's not very nice. But the piece of tissue, I don't know if you'll see this. I don't want to, to drop it, um, because it's just really pretty. It has a pressed flower inside. The things you find inside books from charity shops, I just think it's fabulous. So it's a pressed flower. It doesn't look very attractive on camera, but it's really pretty. Um, and I just love that whole idea of... Um, pressed flowers and random things that you find in books. Um, I'll pop that back in there. Um, I could see that her black fur was tipped with white, as if it were midnight and the moon was shining on her. Tom doesn't want to spend the summer on his aunt's farm. He's not the kind of boy who can milk cows and break in wild horses. Country life is every bit as strange and uncomfortable as he fears, but then he discovers a rare black fox with green eyes. Tom cannot exactly explain his fascination with the creature, but the, sudden, but the summer suddenly seems full of excitement until Uncle Fred decides to go after the fox. Better not die. Better not be killed. I, I, will, I will not be happy. <laughs> I'm going to write in if this fox gets killed, but it's just gorgeous and I can't wait to get to it. And I'm so happy that this is in my collection because, like I say, it's gorgeous. So the next one is a true crime novel. And I already have this 
in an updated edition that my husband got me and I've done a whole other video on it which I will try to link down below but when I saw this I thought I, I need that and I don't know why um so the edition that I got is an updated one that um had more information added to it uh, after the author passed away and um after the serial killer was discovered and uh, sent down. Um, this is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. And this is a really gorgeous edition as well. It is floppy and it has French flaps, which are just cute. Um, I'm so excited to get to this. It tells the story of uh, the Golden State Killer, who was a rapist, murderer, uh, burglar, um, and just downright nasty man and yeah it tells that story i'm not going to read the inside because i've already done a f another full video on that on uh, this where i hold it elsewhere but this is just a different edition and yeah I i'm a magpie when it comes to to books aren't we all um so the next one is a christmas book because christmas is just around the corner and uh yeah i'm excited for that although i get the feeling that 2020 christmas might be cancelled I don't know, I might be wrong, but this is a literary Christmas, um, an anthology, and it's just gorgeous. So this has um, authors that include uh, Jane Austen, Charles Dickens, George Eliot, Kenneth Graham, Roger Kipling, Nancy Mitford, Samuel Pepys, Dylan Thomas, Anthony Trollope, P.G. Woodhouse, and Benjamin Zephaniah. I've never read any Benjamin Zephaniah, and I feel that I need to. I need to have that in my head. Um, I do believe that he writes poetry. Um, for as long as Christmas has been celebrated, poets and writers have sought to explore every aspect of it, whether the story of the nativity or the festive traditions that have grown up over the centuries. A Literary Christmas is a sensational anthology that collects together poems, short stories and prose extracts by some of the greatest poets and writers in the English language, like Charles Dickens's Ghost of Christmas Past and Present, these texts are the representative, are, sorry, these texts are representative of times old and new, from John Donne's Elizabethan hymn to the baby Jesus to Rudyard Kipling's Christmas in India. From Thomas Tusser, counting the cost of a Tudor feast, to P.G. Woodhouse, to P.G. Woodhouse's wry short story about Christmas on a diet. Why would you go on a diet at Christmas time? Enjoy a convivial Christmas day as described by Samuel Pepys, Anthony Trollope, George Eliot, Eliot, <laughs> Graham will learn to read one of these days, George Eliot or Nancy Mitford. Venture out into the snow in the company of Jane Austen, John Evelyn and Dickens', Dickens ever popular Mr Pickwick. Entertain the children with the seasonal tales of Dylan Thomas, Kenneth Graham and George Mackey Brown. For the lovers of great literature, a literary Christmas is the perfect gift. And it's absolutely stunning. Um, it has, I can't find any now. It has really beautiful um, illustrations in as well that are just, just superb and I love it. And I'm so excited to get to it. Um, so yeah, that's A Literary Christmas and Anthology by various authors. The final book in this haul, you'll be glad to know, I'm not going to prattle alone for very much longer, is a folio edition. It doesn't have its slipcase, but when I saw this, I had to have it. Um, this will be now the third edition of this collection that I have, because again, magpie, have no self-control. Um, it is The Just So Stories by Rudyard Kipling. And isn't this just stunning? I mean, that gold lettering is just beautiful. And I'm fairly sure that on the front, that's Bagheera. I'm, I'm sure it's Bagheera from uh, The Jungle Book. Although, it's just so stories, so it might not be Bagheera. I might have just talked absolute nonsense right at you, into your ear holes, down your eyeballs. Ignore me. <laughs> um, there is no uh, blurb for this, I don't think, but there is a dog hair stuck to the end of it, which is nice. Thanks for sharing, doggies. Um, yeah, so there's just, there's a publisher's note, but there's no, um, there's no blurb. But the Just So stories are, they're just so. <laughs> and I can't wait to, to get to this. I wish it had its slipcase, being a folio edition, but it doesn't, so I'll just have to live with that. Um, but yeah, 
that's that's part four of my of my book haul for September. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Whatever you're doing, I hope you have so much fun doing it. Whatever you're reading, I hope you love it. Stay fabulous, be amazing, be yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye-bye.